Okay, so why I left the left. Uh, let me start by kind of saying my lefty street cred. Uh, okay, so my, both my parents were hippies, and I don't think anyone in my family has ever voted for a Republican. Growing up, the Republicans were the uptight people who, this was at the time when the religious right was really big. So the, the Republicans were trying to tell you what you could do and what you should do and couldn't do and what was moral and immoral and, and policing behavior and trying to stop video games. And, and so that was really, they were just not an attractive group of people basically to, uh, to try to identify with, you know. Um, uh, my name is Rama, uh, which in the past people on the left is my name, my given name, Rama, would think that's cool. Now it's kind of become like uh, I am a cultural appropriator because my name is Rama and I'm American. So that's just kind of weird. Um, I traveled in my car for almost a year, uh, sleeping in my car and camping, uh, working at an organic commune, organic produce commune, building a cob house, you know, like a, a cob house, an earthen house, uh, surrounded all the time by like far, far left counterculture, super hippie, organic health food people. I've worked in a health food shop. I've spent time in drum circles in the middle of the forest surrounded by hippies talking about uh, this is this is real talking about these two hippies like trying to one-up each other on who had not taken a bath in the longest amount of time and how they dealt with you know like what kind of oil they put in their hair and and, and, and to prevent the, and how they prevented the body odor and not taking a bath and uh, the value of dreads and the thing is these were always they were like they were my people these hippie groups you know like I felt comfortable around these people they were open-minded they were free thinkers or at least they tried to be and they were trying to live like a free life without being bound and burdened by social norms and social pressures and you know you could kind of just be yourself around these people and, and no one would judge you um, and these were my people so the first time uh, oh, I remember one time one of my girlfriends she was she asked me like what I knew about feminism and I said I don't really know you know and she said well if you believe that men and women should be equal then that means you're a feminist and I said, well, I guess I'm a feminist then. Fine, like men and women should have equal opportunity to do whatever they want, should be treated equally. Now I guess I'm a feminist. Um, and then the first time, the first time that I really started to see the dark side of the left um, was I was in Seattle hanging out at the uh, co-op where a lot of my friends lived. And they started talking about white privilege. And I was there, and I was like, so what's that? What's white privilege? And they were trying to explain it to me. And because I had quite a poor and challenging upbringing, I mean, not nearly as poor or challenging as many, many people, but I don't like to have a bunch of people who grew up with more and in less challenging situations tell me about my privilege. So I was just sort of like pushing back and being like, well, what about, you know, this? What about that? I mean, that doesn't really make sense to me. Uh, can you can you really, can you tell me my white privileges? Like, can you list them for me? And, and, and I was showing them how those are like very individually based people, these privileges. And I was, eventually they basically just said, well, you had to come to my class. Like you had to go to my specific class that I was doing and then you would understand. And I was sort of like, well, that doesn't really make sense to me. You can, you can either explain it or you can't explain it. So, um, but then the topic changed and, and then, uh, you know. And then another time, in another conversation at that same commune place, someone said, you know, I mean, so there was this guy and this girl were talking. And was, so, you know, I get the idea that, that, you know, a woman can do anything that a man can do just as well. And I was like, well, hold on a second. I don't know that that's actually true, you know. 
like clearly men are definitely physically stronger, the average man than the average woman, you know. Uh, and, you know, there are things that no woman can do, but only like the uppermost top tier of physical prowess in of men can do it. I doubt there's any woman that could do that, you know, or do it as well. I think uh, things like being a fireman, uh, I would much rather have the person who comes in to rescue me uh, and carry me out of a burning building uh, be a man than a woman who got special, uh, you know, was graded on a, on a special curve to make sure that to, you know, to, if that they could pass. Um, and they were like kind of shocked at that. And I was like, well, I'm just I'm just going with you know. I mean, maybe you can prove me wrong, but it just seems obvious. I don't I don't want to accept something that doesn't seem obvious, you know, or that that you know that seems obviously wrong rather. Um, and and that's sort of just. And they kind of went on with their thing, and I was like, oh, okay, well, whatever. And um, so that so that was that. That was like a couple. Oh, another time was some of the guys in the co-op. Um, wanted to watch, we were watching some baseball, like I was with some of the guys and then the girls after like a while they complained that this was like, they didn't think that this kind of energy was prop was in the co was good in the co-op and, but they would do like girly things. It was sort of like this, this was bad because it was like sports or something. And so there was that. And then a woman who had just earlier was saying how she didn't like men who had beards, that she didn't like men who, you know, only men who shave. That was the, that was, you know, men should shave, was, was what she was saying. And then uh, I said, well, what about legs? Like, you know, you don't shave your legs. And she was like stunned and like, and she couldn't figure out how that was like, like she saw it was a contradiction, but she didn't, she knew she was right to not shave her legs, but like men who shaved their beards, but she couldn't figure out why? So these, the couple times I saw this, you know, but I, uh, small, minor things. And then, um, you know, I was watching YouTube and I saw this woman, Karen Strawn, and she was talking about feminism. And she really like opened my eyes to uh, how negative the view is of men really, that there is this really negative view of men. And some of these things that I was seeing with my friends, how that was sort of like feminism and this social justice warrior and anti-maleness. So I started looking into that more. And what I just, what I saw like was shocking. Like these people that were just so wrapped up in, in identities and you know, this group against that group and, and the fact that, that I was born this way meant that I was somehow responsible for the suffering of this group or something. And it was really weird, like checking your privilege just seemed so strange to me. Um, it was just so anti everything. So we had these like free thinking, daring to do their own thing and be individual uh, you know, you could be comfortable around. And then it was morphing into this group identity where you had to really like be careful about what you said and, and your identity, like how you were born really mattered in, in, in how you interacted with this group as opposed to just being you. Um, and it was a huge like shock to me. I couldn't really believe it that this is, that this was my tribe, you know, this was my group. And this is how they were behaving. And I just couldn't believe it. I, I was shocked and I was like, no, 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 don't, no, uh, that doesn't make any sense. Clearly you guys have lost something here. Like go, go, take, go back to seeing everyone as, as individuals. And then I, I learned about, you know, S, SJWs and safe spaces and trigger warnings and microaggressions. And then I, I saw Gamergate and how it was being just so attacked. And it was really just, it was like these nerds. Like I was a nerd growing up, man. Like I was a fart, but I was, you know, playing D&D &D and Magic the Gathering. And, and I had a group of very geeky friends and, and, 
And it was like these people were being painted as like the oppressors in Gamergate because they didn't like being told that they were a racist, sexist group that and and Gamergate did nothing wrong, man. Like Gamergate was so just attacked and I was just it was it was sort of like it was like the the outcast girls were attacking the outcast boys. You know, it was like the outcast boys were sort of like, now there were always geek girls, but there was a very minority. It was a very male oriented community, which I don't see anything wrong with that. You know, there are plenty of female oriented communities. Now, should it be open and uh, should it be welcoming to people who are not male? Of course it should. But, you know, they were going in and, and accusing and blaming and trying to change things. And then attacking people who didn't like it, who didn't want to play the identity politics game. And that was a big eye opener to me. Um, and, and then there was, you know, like people that I knew and respected as moral individuals that I knew from when I was living in Seattle. And they're posting things. Um, they're posting things like, remember there were the, uh, the ranchers who had that thing with, against, with the government and uh, their land, you know, they were like opposing the government, seizing their land and building fences in their land. I remember I looked into it at one point. I can't remember all the details. But this guy that I know who's like a good person, you know, he posted something and calling it white ISIS, this group of ranchers. And that the government, you know, if it was, if it was any other group, that they would already have been all killed. But it was white people. So it was okay, white ISIS. And I was like, what? How would you even say that? It's insane. You know what I mean? Like, you, of course, you're free to say it, but it's insane. Like, how could someone, it's so just dirty and wrong to compare these people with ISIS, you know? These people are badass standing up against the government who I thought was the bad guy, you know? Like, it was like, damn the man, right? And these people are, these, these, these guys were, were badass, and they were standing up against, you know, top-down control. And when did... When did, you know, and, and, then, and then there was the election, Hillary Clinton, who was like, if you went down the list of the worst of the worst who could support somebody, you know, you had all these like big banks that were, you know, just, just before were, you know, admitted to they, that they were like funneling money to terrorists and, and uh, laundering Mexican drug cartel money and... Uh, you know, paying fines for defrauding people is like just part of the gig. And, and, and these people are supporting Hillary Clinton. And so the Occupy Wall Street people, like the far left guys, are now supporting the banksters and the banking terrorist groups uh, who are supporting Hillary Clinton, who support Saudi Arabia. And I just, I can't understand it, man. Like, I don't get it. And, and then Donald Trump is, is Hitler, supposedly, you know. And the guy's got flaws, don't get me wrong. Like, the guy is, no, he's, he's definitely got his flaws. Come on, if they're obvious to see. But he's not being supported by the worst of the worst when it comes to, you know, global banking terrorists and... and uh, you know, Lloyd Blankfein, Jamie Dimon, all these, you know, and yeah, he's got some, like I said, he's got some faults, and there he's racist and horrible, and then, and then I saw, I saw where Mitt Romney was talking about how even if, he, if Trump won the uh, nomination that he shouldn't be the candidate. I was like, what? And then I saw how the Bushes were going to vote for, for Hillary Clinton. And I was like, what? What's going on here? So I looked, I looked up Trump, and I was trying to find all this racist, horrible thing he said. He, he had said, and people were talking about him. I couldn't find him. Like, there was a thing about uh, Mexicans sending, their, uh, sending their, their criminals over, their rapists, and their whatever. But like anyone with like third grade reading comprehension can find out that he was talking about Maybe he could be. He would. You could accuse him of, of like being, having a conspiracy theory that they're sending over their criminals. But in no way was he saying that all Mexicans are criminals. You know, maybe he's like paranoid about it or whatever. But 
And I'm just not going to accept this. With it's, it's insane. I'm not going to accept that this guy is the worst of the two when all we know about, like, the Clintons with the Haiti thing and stealing money from disaster victims from, like, the poorest, one of the poorest nations in the world and stealing their money. And, and I mean, it's just god-awful, right? So I, I just, I look at it and I just see, like, my tribe has gone completely nuts and they're being totally just led by the mainstream media and, and the mainstream media who they used to think was bad is now their champions against Trump. I don't get it. So I, I can't call myself on the left anymore. And I don't, you could say maybe it's because like I have, uh, I'm getting older, I'm not 40 and so I'm becoming more conservative. I don't think my views have changed at all. I don't think they have. I think what's considered left has changed, not me. That's what it seems to me. Anyway, thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.